I don't know how this is gonna work because my GoPro mount has broken for some reason. I pulled it off and it was snapped. But anyway, what's happening everyone? We're back today with another video. We're not gonna really be doing anything today because we don't really have parts and the weather's up and down like a yo-yo. So we're just gonna go for a little drive and go through basically quite a commonly asked question. So I get a lot of questions about how obviously well what I've used to get the fitment on this car so a lot of questions are what size wheels have you got what spaces have you got what coilovers have you got and stuff like that and what just general suspension components do you have so I'm not going to go through every single component because it's mainly just to sort of this video is just to get a a feel of how to get your car to sit like mine if you want it to um, obviously there's probably way more better stances out there or people might be chasing but I have had a lot of questions saying how have you got it to sit the way you have or um, just in general just questions about like what wheels I'm using and all that a lot of people are asking what ET are they what width are they what size are they so the wheels in this car are obviously Bowler B10s and they are a 17 by 7.5J with an ET of 35, so ET35. That's the main start you want to go from on here and yeah, they're 7.5J like the standard ST150 wheels but the offset is a lot bigger. Like, I went from needing say, I don't know, 15 to 20 mil spaces at the front to needing 10 mil spaces if that or not need them at all so you can tell the sort of difference between the size obviously between the two and the main one is obviously it's got AP coilovers I'm not going to say how much they're lowered by because that's the sort of thing you do when you buy springs you're just going to have to get it to your sort of adjustment uh, all I can pretty much say is a one finger gap in the arch between the tire and the arch is what you'd be going for then you know if you do hit a bump like it would have to be a really heavy or a big bump to get like the car to rub so always bear that in mind always try and aim for like just one finger between the arch and the tire if you can get that then you're pretty much winning straight away on coilovers is very easy so yeah I run the APs they're very good very stiff coilover for the money and they're not too harsh on the road as you can see but I can quite happily speak to you right now no problems not too bumpy or too stiff so yeah I think for the value of the money I think they're about 500 pound brand new and a lot of people are always selling them second hand anyway because they're upgrading to BC's or whatever so yeah you can always bear that in mind Obviously on the back we've got the Anembo Engineering 20mm spacers. I did run into quite a few issues uh, with these when I first got them because I was still on a standard size tyre and I had to raise the car fully up because it was rubbing really bad and even with the car fully raised at the back um, still rubbed like really really badly it's actually like a joke on how bad it actually rubbed I mean even like now I'll get a bit on might get a bit on the front but that's because if I go over a real big like hump or whatever too fast but if I roll I know for a fact if the arches are rolled on this you'll be alright which is the next thing we'll be doing when we fit the new wings so we've got the Anembo engineering spacers make such a difference I think but obviously if you don't run the Bowler B10s with an ET35, you will have to run different spaces. So the best thing you can do is just run a tape measure from the, the rim of the wheel, or the lip of the wheel even, to the ed, like the arch lip, and then that will give you a rough idea. That's how I work my ones up. So going to the front, the only reason why these are on the car is because I was trying to get the 
wishbones not to rub when I fitted them, them uh, tubular wishbones we had on until they destroyed the bloody car. Uh, I was trying to space the wheel out a bit more so they wouldn't hit the like, wishbones, but obviously it didn't work and I just left them on. So we actually went for like a 10 mil spacer from H&R. I'll put all the links in the description. The only thing with the H&R ones, they do, because they're too small to actually have a built-in stud, you have got to fit your own studs, which the kit comes with anyway. So, once once you've done all that, you will start finding that the car is going to rub quite a bit. Like, I mean, any little divot in the road, it will rub on the front. So, I was thinking to myself, what do I do? Like, do I take the spacers out and have to refit standard studs again? Um, or do I go down a tyre size and I've considered doing tyre sizes just for the back in the past but it's just trying to find like obviously with a 205 40 17 like trying to find anything to stretch like from that is quite hard in itself I think actually found the 195 40 17 um, I originally found it in just cheap only tyres but obviously with the new plans that will be coming in store with this car and the power it will be making which I haven't told you guys about yet so it's a little sneak peek um, the tyres like if I put cheap tyres on it it would just be pointless doing the whole thing if I'm honest because it just wouldn't grip it would spin up and it probably want to put me into the nearest hedge or someone's front garden so I managed to find some Falcons uh, quite cheap on Facebook and obviously I found actually where to get them from now, they're from Demon Tweaks so uh, the reason being I wanted to get some second hand ones just for the fact of testing fitment more than anything, no real reason, I don't really want to spend a, like two to three hundred pounds on tyres and find out they don't fit and work with what I want. So. Thank you to Rio who sold me the tyres and then Jonathan helped me get them fitted. I, I was going to film it all but obviously we were doing it at his workplace so I didn't want to get no one in trouble. And we retracked the car after the wishbone fell out so it drives nice and straight now. We got some nice tyres on and we went for a little drive up Box Hill the other night because I was going out to some dinner. And the car drove great absolutely fine and but as you guys who know box hill quite a few of you do it's quite a bumpy old ride up there and yeah it was a champ didn't rub didn't do anything so that's basically the fitment on my car like i'll go for it all again just now so we've got 195 40 17 tires on a little bit of a stretch nothing too crazy Obviously, I'll show you throughout. And then by engineering, 20 millimeter axle spacers, H&R 10 mil axle spacers at the front with extended studs. Trust me, you'll need those. It doesn't work if you don't put them on there. And then obviously the AP coilovers to obviously give me the ride height adjustability that I want you can just tailor it to whatever you guys require but I've just lowered mine to one finger gap in between the tire and the actual arch itself so that's pretty much it on how to get sort of fitment on my car um, obviously I know a few of you haven't seen it as of yet because it used to be fully raised on the rear and it sort of used to rake a bit like that uh, but now we have the rear fully lowered like we used to before I did these spacers. So we'll do like a little quick walk around of the car once I get home, which will be very shortly. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed and be sure to check out more content on my channel if you're new. So please like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you later.